This is the Look Back Wrestling Show, and I'm your host, Ali Zaka. What's up, guys? Welcome to this episode of the Look Back Wrestling Show. So let's go ahead and jump into, like, this week's Raw and SmackDown. So Raw opens up with Brock Lesnar coming out and Paul Heyman cutting a promo about Brock Lesnar and, and Roman Reigns and the Paul Heyman stick, pretty much. Then Roman Reigns comes up. He brings out a chair, think he's going to use it against Brock, try to get the upper hand. Unfortunately, Brock just takes that chair and like turns it around on Roman and just beats down Roman again. So you get another Roman Reign gets beat down segment by Brock Lesnar. And that's pretty much what we get from them. And next week, you probably see maybe uh, uh, Roman Reigns may, might get the upper hand. I doubt it because if he plus to go over at WrestleMania, you kind of want him feeling like he can't win until he wins at the big show. Next, we get Nia Jax versus Mickey James. Alexa Bliss and Mickey James come all and come out together. It's a pretty much Nia powerhousing Mickey. Mickey does get the upper hand. She started attacking Nia Jax's legs, but Nia was able to overcome, and Nia gets the victory. Alexa Bliss does try to come in and intervene at the end of the match, but Nia pretty much stops her short and runs Alexa off. The Cruiserweights are back on Raw again. So we had a tag team match, Mustafa Ali and Cedric Alexander versus TJP and Drew Grulak. Guess you thought, guess you think, guess for a moment, guess. Guess who do you think won? You saying the faces? Yeah, you saying the faces. The faces won, of course they did. So that's the victors of that match. This is probably one of the best segments of the night. It's Miz TV in the hometown of the Miz, his hometown where he's from, Cleveland, Ohio. And he pretty much says, Cleveland sucks. I live in uh, Los Angeles now. now. And like the crowd boos him and everything. But the Miz is pretty much running down the Miz garage. He runs down Bo Dallas. He runs down good old Curtis Axel and said, like, they're not doing anything for him. They're not helping him out. Like, come on, guys. And... Seth Rollins comes out kind of like edging Miz on to break down the Miz rise. And then Bo Dallas calls Miz a no-name or wannabe A-lister with like, oh, what was it? I remember the quote. Oh, a phony A-lister that couldn't fight. I had to look at my notes there. And I was like, oh. And the Miz is like, wait, what did you say? And Finn Balor comes out. And Finn also is kind of like edging um, Bo Dallas on, he's like, come on, loser, come, say, say he sucks. And um, Bo's like, no, I called him a phony A-lister that can't fight. And Miz looked at Bo Dallas again, Bo's like, oh. Uh, and Curtis Axel's like, all right, let me jump in, help out here. He's like, Bo, Bo, don't don't go off on the Miz, don't go off on this. Because uh, Miz now running him down, so you won't be who I catering, like you will be, and catering wasn't for me and all this. And the Miz's like, I'm the greatest champ, icy title, I'm the greatest champion, you know, I'm better than Shine, I'm better than Macho Man, I'm better than Curtis Axel, hey, I'm better than um, Mr. Perfect, Kurt, Kurt Axel, is it Kurt Axel? No. Oh my gosh, we have Mr. Perfect's name. That's gonna bother me. But I'm better than Mr. Perfect, and Curtis, who's the son of Mr. Perfect, he looks at him and goes, what? And Miz like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, Miz is about to jump Miz, but as they're about to fight him, they end up jumping Seth Rollins and Finn Balor. It's all ploys, all a trick to get the upper hand on Seth and Finn. And it breaks down with the Balor Club coming out to save Finn and save Seth Rollins. A brawl breaks out. Finn picks up the IC title after, oh, Finn picks up the IC title. Seth about to take it away. Miz try to jump them both. Pretty much another scuffle breaks out with Finn standing tall with the IC title. Sorry about that, guys. The doorbell rang. But um, I want you to do my best. Sorry about the background noise. You hear everybody talking. Just do my best and roll with this. Okay, so next, Oscar faces this girl by the name of Frost. And it's kind of fun because Frost is like, nobody's ready for me. Everybody's ready for Oscar. Well, Oscar's not ready for me. I thought it was kind of funny, but Oscar just, you know, Squash match just destroys her. Next, we get Matt Hardy say he's in the Battle Royale. And I'm kind of excited for this because I'm hoping Bray Wyatt also is in the Battle Royale. And Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy teams up. And they will face Sanity. So the Woken Universe faces Sanity. That's what I'm predicting in the future. 
when we come back to this video, I could be completely wrong, but after WrestleMania or after SummerSlam, I want to see the Woken Universe versus Sandy. So Sasha Banks finally snaps. Her and Bailey had us talking in the like in the locker room area, and Bailey pretty much said, like, Sasha, you keep cutting me off, you keep doing this, but you're mad because you can't beat me. Sasha loses it and start attacking Bailey. Her and Bailey get into a brawl backstage and finally get the conclusion, or I guess the beginning of like the tipping point, I should say, not in the beginning, the tipping point of their rivalry like just exploding. I'm excited for this. Hopefully get a bunch of pay-per-view matches with these two going at it, like maybe a, a ladder match or a TLC match or something, Hell in a Cell, something, or probably a steel cage match, but something where these two just go at it and just let let them go. Strowman versus Sheamus. Um, Strowman is manhandling Sheamus, then Sheamus does get the upper hand when Strowman runs into the ring post. But it comes down to Strowman getting the victory, and we're still waiting for his tag team partner at WrestleMania. I'm hoping it is Kurt Hawkins, because I think that would just be hilarious. But at the same time, I don't want this to be like a comedy act like Heath Slater and Rhino. Kurt Angle brings out Ronda Rousey. So that's the next segment here. And pretty much Absolution comes out, interrupt their promo, and say, we want to recruit you, Ronda. Ronda, join us. Ronda's like, no, I'm not going to join you guys. And Absolution's like, well, we'll just make it. Pretty much just make an example of you. They tried, but Rhonda made the example of them. She ended up taking down Sonya Deville, and then she took down Mandy, Ro Mandy Rose. And she's at the point where she's going to try to snap Mandy Rose's arm, but Kurt Angle stops her, and that segment ends there. The Miserage versus the Ballad Club. Ballad Club wins. And I just, I don't know, I kind of wish the Miserage got a better push. Like Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel kind of wish they got a better push. And Kurt Hennings. That's his name. Not, I don't call him Kurt Axel, but Kurt Hennings is is Mr. Perfect. That just popped in my mind. But anyway, back to the segment. But I wish the Miz Rogers got a better push. I kind of wish there was a tag team titles or tag team champion with Miz IC Championship. Like it, it would just have them have all the gold besides the Universal Title. Or heck, when Roman Reigns beat Brock and let the Miz be his next opponent, and the Miz gets the Universal Title. Give the Miz Rock the tag team belts. All the go. All red everything. Then we have Elias Sessa comes out. He does his whole little stick. He gets interrupted by Rhino. He beats Rhino. And he beats down. He Slater. And Elias wins. That's, that's it. John Cena versus King in a no disqualification match. They went all over the ring. Bunch of tables broken. Everything. John Cena gets the victory. And then he calls out. Undertaker again says Kane came up here and fought for you. Where are you Undertaker? Where are you? And just pretty much saying like all right sit at home wine like that, but people want you here Where are you at? And he calls Undertaker a coward and then he walks out and as he's leaving the ring he does the Cut neck thing that Undertaker does and that's how Raw ends After a recap for Smackdown from last week's Smackdown Smackdown opens up with a match between Bobby Roode and Randy Orton versus Jinder Mahal and plus being Sunil, uh, one of the same brothers, but unfortunately he's injured from last week's actions. So this brings out Rusev to help out Jinder. Rusev and Jinder teams up against Bobby and Randy. A very long match, but it comes down to Randy and Bobby have some issues with each other. Randy Orton taking down Rusev, he's about to do his whole like RKO setup. But as he's getting ready to do the setup for the RKO, Bobby Roode gets knocked into Randy by gender, which Randy Orton RKO's Bobby Roode. This allows Rusev to super kick him and get the victory. So Jinder Mahal and Rusev wins. And I'm just going to jump to the backstage segment where Jinder, Jinder's talking to Rusev. Rusev's like, well, I get the victory. I'm going to ask Daniel Bryan, can I be in the triple threat match at WrestleMania and make it a fatal four-way? And Jinder just loses it. He looks at Sunil and he goes, take that, take the brace off, take the injured gear off. Like, how dare you? You should have been there. I was like, I like this and I hope this happened. And we're getting it. We're getting a fatal four-way now, which makes me super happy because Root says he's finally getting a WrestleMania match. Like, we wasn't sure he'd be at WrestleMania. I thought maybe he'd be put in the Battle Royale, but I'm glad he's not being put in that Battle Royale. He's going to be put in a title match and heck, I hope he wins. That'd be a cool, cool way to, um, Cap off everything with the Rusev Day, and that's them capitalizing on the Rusev Day hype right now. We get a backstage segment between Sinsuke Nakamura and AJ Styles, and 
Shinsuke is facing Shelton Benjamin later tonight, so he asked AJ to be in his corner. AJ says yes, because he don't want to ruin the match at WrestleMania. Next, we get Becky Lynch versus Ruby Riot. A match that also had a bunch of time. And Becky Lynch get the victory. Like, I could break down that, oh, the Riot Squad got involved, so like that. But it didn't really matter because Becky Lynch got the victory. And then on top of that, she also threw both members of the Riot Squad over the top rope. Pretty much saying, like, she's ready for the Battle Royale at WrestleMania. And I'm thinking, man, they made the Riot Squad look really weak against Becky Lynch, who looks super strong right now. Maybe building up a title match between Becky Lynch and who are the new champions going to be? I don't know, but... She looks super strong versus the Riot Squad, which is not good for the Riot Squad. Daniel Bryan comes out and he pretty much sets up the WrestleMania match, which will be Shane O'Mac and Daniel Bryan versus Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. And Sami and Kevin wins, they get rehired. And Daniel Bryan says, I'm tired of being a manager. I'm ready to be a wrestler and I'm ready to fight for my dreams. Let's go. So that's the Daniel Bryan segment. Next we get... A Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable promo with the words on it. And I was like, God dang it. They got away from it. And here we are with the words on the screen again. Smackdown, stop it. After that, we get New Day versus the Bludgeon Brothers in a match where it's Xavier Woods and Big E versus the Bludgeon Brothers. Where Xavier Woods was starting off hot, but apparently during commercial break, we, we didn't get to see that. And we come back to... The Bludgeon Brothers attacking Xavier Woods back. Because before the match, Xavier Woods had said that the Bludgeon Brothers tried to break their back, tried to destroy them. But, you know, the New Day is ready for them. And the match comes down to, which one was it, Rowan? Rowan gets the hammer, trying to go use the hammers. But the Usos come out, save the New Day. A brawl breaks out between the Usos and Rowan. And then the New Day breaks out and beats down Harper. They get in the ring, they push out the Bludgeon Brothers, and then the Usos and the New Day start to go at it. They bump into each other, start to go at it, and the Harper uh, Bludgeon Brother comes in with the hammers, try to attack New Day and the Usos. Everybody scatters, and we get a triple threat at WrestleMania, which I was hoping for. The Bludgeon Brothers versus the New Day versus the Usos for the Tag Team Championships. I'm excited. Let's go. Dolph Ziggler versus Tyler Breeze. Just another match to build up the Andre the Giant Battle Royale. The only thing about this was kind of goofy was Fandango kept dancing on the side of the ring and then like he was dancing around the ring and running around the ring just being goofy throughout the whole match. Dolph wins and he super kicks both people. I guess he super kicks Fandango and does a zigzag to Tyler Breeze, but he wins the match. It kind of says like he's ready for the Andre the Giant Battle Royale. And one note I'm getting from this is that they're actually pushing this Battle Royale so the winner of this one should actually get a bigger push. It's not just somebody who just... Um, here, I got this. I'm not doing anything with it, like Mojo Raleigh or um, we're gonna call him Corey Graves, but I'm not Baron Corbin. Like, wow, like those two guys, they got it. Baron has a bigger push than Mojo Raleigh, but they didn't really do anything with it. Finally, get the main event, and this match I was excited for. Nakamura versus Shelton Benjamin. They both wrestled each other, I believe, in New Japan Wrestling. And Shelton Benjamin, who is a like a really good athletic athlete, versus Nakamura. Like these two should put on a good show. I thought it would be a pay-per-view quality match. It wasn't. It's more of a so-so match. But it was kind of cool seeing how they was like carrying each other's submission moves. But it comes down to Nakamura getting the victory on Shelton Benjamin, hitting him with a Kinsasa. But what really picks up is after the match, AJ Styles comes in and Nakamura and AJ have a talk. And Nakamura says, AJ's so emotional. That's why I'm going to beat you at WrestleMania. Okay, Nakamura walks off. Then Gable and Benjamin jumps AJ. Shinsuke comes in, saves AJ, knocks out both Gable, knocks out Benjamin. Both of them take him out. And then he sees AJ like in the corner and Shinsuke gets him set up for a Kinsasa. And right as he's about to land the final kick, he stops and he looks at AJ and says, knee to face. Pat on his head and walks off. And I was like, that's a phenomenal way to end SmackDown. I loved it. I enjoyed it. Good for them. Good job, WWE. And that's SmackDown Raw. And that's this week's episode of Look Back Wrestling Show. What do you guys think? Please put in the comment section below. What do you think was the best segment of the week? What's your favorite moments? Tell me. Let me know. Who you think, who you think gonna win at WrestleMania? It's gonna be AJ, Nakamura. Like who you think? Please put in the comment section below. 
Thank you guys for watching this episode. See you next time. Keep being awesome. Thank you guys for watching this episode. I really appreciate it. Please like, comment in the comment section below, and please subscribe for more episodes of Grind Towards Success, movie breakdowns, or whatever it is that you're watching on my channel. I have different stuff from interviews to other movie reviews to wrestling reviews. If you're a wrestling fan, please, please subscribe if you want to see all that and see what's going on. Also, you can follow me on Snapchat here. Follow me on Instagram there to see what I'm doing in my personal life as well as my business and Ninja Warrior. And lastly, you can watch the last episode of Grind Tour Success here. You can watch the last episode of Movie Breakdowns there. Thank you guys once again. I really appreciate it. See you next time. Keep being awesome.